to independent women's forums, Hadley Heath Manning and Fox News contributor Gary Kalbaum. Let's talk, Hadley, first about the jobs figures. What are your thoughts? You know, it's always hard for the A student to also get the award for most improved when you're already moving strong and that's what our economy is doing. Then, of course, occasionally we're going to miss expectations. We don't want to miss the forest for the trees here. I mean, there's a 49 year low in unemployment. Um, I think there's a lot to celebrate. Many more families have a family member who is working today um, because of gains, um, mostly due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act and other deregulatory efforts from the administration. So I think, you know, occasionally we're going to have have some, some numbers that aren't so great, but overall Americans continue to be much better off now than they were this time a year ago. And Gary, I think what the market is telling us right now is that it's in a bearish mood. It's as simple as that. When, when you have mixed messages coming in in the economy, depending on which way the market feels, that's the way it's going to go. I mean, you could have mixed messages a year ago when the market was more bullish and you could have had an update today. Uh, that is correct. It's not the news. It's how markets react to the news. But let me just say this. I am 100 percent certain the economy has topped and we're heading south. Doesn't mean we have to have a recession, but we're going lower. Just in the last few weeks, estimates have come down from 3 percent to 2.4 percent. I expect the coming quarters to maybe be in the ones. For me, though, the big story is Europe. You have Germany, the engine of Europe, contracting last quarter. Even though the ECB is still printing money and have negative rates, the question is, what ammo are they going to have left? And the same goes for Japan. And we are not immune to what goes around the globe. And I think markets are seeing that. And if the markets break the recent lows, we've hit them three times, uh, we're going to be talking about real bear market for the major indices, even though the average stock is already there. Well, and Hadley, I think that's one reason why we got this Wall Street Journal report yesterday that really turned the markets around. They, they still ended negative, but uh, they gained 700 points on the news from the Wall Street Journal that the Fed is rethinking its rate structure and probably won't be raising rates as much because they are worried about what Gary was talking about. Right, and we'll see what that does to the housing market, which has been one area of concern recently uh, as we look at, you know, a lot of different metrics. There's going to be pundits and talking heads on either side who try to paint, you know, one picture of the economy or another. But the bottom line is the stock market is, is going to change from day to day, and it's going to respond, as you said, to news headlines. Uh, certainly it's going to respond to news about potential trade deals. Um, but when it comes to families who are looking at their pocketbooks and their bottom line sitting around the kitchen table, many more families today can say they have a paycheck, they have a bigger paycheck, they're able to spend money on Christmas gifts and save money right. for the future. No, I, and I, that's really that's the backbone That's wonderful of our for the average American family. But don't you think the markets are telling us something about the overall economy? Oh, certainly. I mean, I, I, I agree to a certain extent with Gary. You know, like I said, it's hard for an A student to get the most improved award when the economy does top out. I yeah. mean, you, you can't run an engine too hot. And certainly we need to be prepared for the future. So it's good for, for families to a certain extent if they can save and invest. Um, but many of those investments are in the stock market ultimately. And uh, everyday working Americans and their loved ones are impacted by the stock market um, in more ways than maybe they realize. Gary, one of the delights of my day is every morning when I get one of your little notes about what the market is doing and what you think it will do. You, you take on the Fed chair, Mr. Powell, and say that he's really acting a lot like uh, one of his predecessors, Ben Bernanke. How so? Well, under Bernanke's tenure, every, t every time the market w went down, uh, he would lower rates or talk easier money. And I was hoping with this gentleman in that he'd be a little bit different. But it seems to me he saw the markets getting hit. All of a sudden he came out with that noise last week that instead of raising rates a, f a few times in 2019, that we're closer to neutral. Market rallies up. We get hit for 1,500 points in two days. And guess what happens yesterday? Yeah. They put this thing out to the Wall Street Journal. Oh, well, maybe we're going to stop this thing altogether. I just don't want a central bank to be watching markets. They should be uh, uh, do dealing with the economy. I hate but it's very rare. I forgive me for interrupting, Gary, I but know. it's very rare for a Fed chair to do that. I think I know. We, we can all think of a couple of examples uh, where a couple of Fed chairs stood up to, to what the market was doing, but not many do. They but, all cave. But, 
But think about this one thing. For eight years, interest rates were at zero percent. Right. That means savers were screwed out of uh, maybe a, a trillion or two dollars. And to me, that's that's a I sin understand. with manipulating a rates. Just in my opinion, I can promise you a ton of people disagree okay. with me. Okay, I want to switch to some breaking news no, because right. Huawei's CFO is due in court at 1 p.m. Eastern time. This is big news. Gary, what effect do you think this is going to have on U.S.-China trade talks? Well, uh, you know, I was thinking two things. Uh, number one, doesn't trade have trust involved? And all of a sudden we have this happen. By the way, I am not exonerating China. We're finding out they may have uh, been on, involved with the Marriott hack also. So maybe she's guilty. But how do you get a trade deal when you were, uh, have the Canada arrest the CFO of pretty much the most major technology company in China when you're negotiating on technology companies? My second thought is, what if China reciprocates or retaliates is a better word and arrests one of our American uh, technology people over in China for no reason at all? These are the things, you know, I'm worried about here and certainly doesn't help. And then I was listening to Navarro this morning. I don't know what the hell's coming yeah. out of all his right, mouth. That's they a whole other issue. But Hadley, keeping it on Huawei, the bottom line is we had to do something. I mean, if they're breaking the, the law as well as the general rules of the World Trade Organization that they signed on to, we had to do something. The, the, the question the question really is why now? Couldn't they have waited a little bit? Well, I think it's never too late. It's never the wrong moment to do the right thing. I think, you know, the story is just one headline among many that represents a trend and attention because, of course, we want to have good uh, trade relations that are mutually beneficial between China and the U.S. But when China continues to be a bad actor, when Chinese companies continue to break the rules, we can't turn a blind eye to that. And I'm glad that the administration right. is looking for balance here. They want to have a good trade relationship, but not at the expense of American interests and even just in some cases, American lives. Hadley and Gary, great to have you on. Thank you very much.